<laughs> All right. Well, I'll get started. Here is the uh, the exciting attendance sheet. There you go. I'll begin with a word of prayer. Ahem. Debbie, Father, we uh, thank you for this day again. I uh, thank you for this class and your creation that we can study. Help us to understand a little bit more today, Lord. In my brother Jesus, Amen. So let me um, begin by talking about gravitation potential energy. Um, so the potential energy due to mass of the Earth. All right, so <clears throat> we worked out last time that that was basically this, minus G <clears throat> um, mass in question, mass of the Earth, divided by the distance from the center of the Earth. Now, you could also write this as minus G M mass of the Earth, divided by the radius of the Earth plus the altitude, right? So if I was to draw a picture, so here's the center of the Earth, radius of the Earth, right? And then your mass up here, this distance right here is H, right? So the distance from the center of the Earth out to where your little mass is, is radius, radius of the Earth plus the altitude. So, we could um, we could think of this as a function, right? This is a function of, of h, right? It's a function of h. So you guys have had calculus too for a little bit. So you should know that we can expand that as f of zero plus f prime of zero times h plus one half f prime prime of zero times h squared plus dot 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 dot. That's the Taylor series for the potential energy um, expanded in altitude. Now f of zero is what? <clears throat> so f of zero here would just be minus g m mass of the Earth divided by the radius of the Earth. That's just a constant, right? <coughs> What's f prime of h equal to, guys? Can you differentiate with respect to h? What do you get? You get g m m of the Earth divided by radius of the Earth plus h quantity squared, right? Because we have the reciprocal power, we differentiate, we increase by one in the negative sense, and minus minus gives me plus. So what's f prime of zero? G M M E. <clears throat> oh no. Big reveal, huh? All right. Ahem. You, you are the other board over there. I, I'm in the middle of something here. All right, thank you. So, <clears throat> F prime of zero is GMME over RE squared um, times H. All right. <clears throat> Plus some number times H squared, right? Plus tired stuff. Now, <coughs> We worked this out before. What was what is what is this this business right here? Notice that G mass of the Earth divided by the radius of the Earth squared is approximately 
meters per second squared. So the formula that you're looking at here is literally, um, it's literally just equal to uh, minus gm me divided by the radius of the earth, essentially plus m gh, and then plus higher order terms. All right? So <coughs> this is why, among other reasons, it's okay for us to use potential energy as mgh near the surface of the earth, right? Because that is nothing more than the Taylor expansion of the true potential energy due to the Earth's gravity, um, you know, that, that's that. Now, let's talk about escape velocity for a bit here. Hmm. <coughs> oh, man. <coughs> Wonderful. All right. <laughs> I'm okay. So the total energy is potential energy plus kinetic energy, right? And so that would be minus g m, m of the earth, divided by the distance from the center of the earth, right? Um, plus one half m v squared, right? This is the total mechanical energy if we're talking about <clears throat> a point like a, you know, a mass like this, right? <clears throat> so, <coughs> excuse me guys. So suppose, suppose that you, you know, have your mass here and it's basically, you know, the radius of the earth from the center, right? And let us, <clears throat> let us ignore <coughs> Benjamin and <clears throat> I know that's hard, but um, suppose its velocity is just straight up like this, okay? Let's call that the initial velocity, v naught. Then the question is, if you, and I, I pose this, oops, well, sorry. Um, <coughs> I got <you. laughs> Oh, no. Here, I, I can load it for you. Oh, I got it. I'll load it for you. Let me load it for you. No. I'm not loading you. <sighs> so the question is, if we shoot, you know, well, let's take a, let's imagine it's a Nerf gun and you shoot, shoot the Nerf gun straight up, ignoring the, up. ignoring the, the, <laughs> Ignoring the rotational motion of the Earth and, um, and all that, right? So imagine you just, you know, straight up, ignoring all the orbital motion and all that. Because, of course, if you think about it, if you, um, if you timed the, you know, if you timed the, sh the shot of the Nerf gun to co coincide with the rotational motion of the Earth, you could reduce this velocity, right? Yeah, right. Like, it, yeah, I mean, if you were... If you were strategic and you like tried to boost off the rotational velocity already, then you could lower this, right? Um, <clears throat> but we're ignoring that kind of thing. Just imagine shooting it straight up. Okay. So an energy diagram of what's going on here is this. So here is radius, here's potential energy, right? And the potential energy plot looks like what? like this, right? This is <clears throat> potential energy equal to minus gm me divided by r. So, <clears throat> what? Is there any paper? Is there any paper? No, there's no paper. All right, so here's, let's say the radius of the Earth is here. So, so suppose, basically, <clears throat> if we think about it, as we discussed last time in, some, in a little bit of depth, you know, to the, to the left, 
uh, to the left of the radius of the Earth line, the potential energy plot doesn't really mean much, right? Because the potential energy has a different formula inside the Earth because inside the Earth, the Earth drop, the force of gravity linearly drops from its maximum value at the surface to zero at the center, right? So if you think about this, the energy diagram would look like this. If your energy was like here, what would happen? You would you'd shoot the you know shoot the projectile up. You get so high, you get to the point where all of your energy is potential. Then what happens? You fall back down, right? So you can kind of <clears throat> envision whoa, emotion like this, and then it come back. You know, it would come back. <clears throat> but what happens? What happens if the total energy is zero? If the total energy level is zero or above, see it never comes back. It never comes back if the total energy is greater than zero. <clears throat> Assuming that we have set up our potential energy to be zero at infinity. Yeah? That's just the edge. That's the minimum amount of energy you can have to be gravitationally uncoupled from the Earth. Ignoring the fact that, of course, we could take advantage of like the Earth's rotation and like, you know, shoot in the same tangential direction and get a boost from that, um, things like that. I mean, there's all kinds of fancy games you can play in terms of using the um, <clears throat> gravity of other objects. To you guys have all heard about like slingshotting around planets for the, you know, far out satellites, things like that. So I'm not, I'm not talking about anything so fancy as that. Just boring, shoot it straight up. All right, so the, the, <clears throat> the escape velocity is defined then, essentially, to be the velocity, <clears throat> the energy of escape. It's essentially, by definition, the energy, um, <clears throat> the velo is, you know, one-half mass times the escape velocity squared minus GM, mass of the Earth, <clears throat> excuse me, divided by, um, and so here I'm assuming what's, what's my, <clears throat> when I have velocity V escape, so V escape is my V naught, okay? <clears throat> excuse me. <sighs> um, so I'm imagining we're starting the motion from the surface of the Earth, right? So my initial radius is just RE, right? <clears throat> excuse me. So this is going to be equal to zero, and we can solve for that. What's the escape velocity? Cancel your m's. You've got v escape is equal to the square root of 2g mass of the Earth divided by the radius of the Earth. That would be the escape velocity. You crunch the numbers here. It's 11.18 kilometers per second. Um, like, Nerf doesn't make that yet. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> so this is, uh, for con maybe let me put it in more familiar terms. This is something like 25,000 miles per hour. <laughs> so, not much danger of that happening for, yeah. On the mission, there's a problem where a guy starts at 20 kilometers per second and you're finding the maximum altitude. Mm. Would it be infinite then? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I think if I answer your question, I'll answer the question. <clears throat> well, I want you to understand it for yourself. But it does seem like if you had more energy if you had more velocity than that, then you wouldn't come back. At least for the Earth, right? You could also ask the question, what's the escape velocity for the sun, right? We could do the same calculation. We could do the same calculation, but with like, with respect to launching something from the Earth's mean orbital radius, and like, would it escape the, uh, <clears throat> the solar system, right? So there we would want to use the mass of the sun and an astronomical, astronomical unit. Fortunately, it's a very bad shot. Um, <coughs> 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 J 
you guys want to calculate? Let's, let's calculate the escape velocity for the solar system while we're at it. What would that be? <laughs> Assuming that we're launching stuff from Earth, right? Um, same calculation, <clears throat> but we would end up with the square root of 2 big G mass of the sun divided by <clears throat> the radius of the Earth orbit. Assuming we're launching our projectile from Earth orbit, right? So that's the square root of <clears throat> 2 times, you okay? And uh, <clears throat> How about no? Let's see here. Um, How are you doing again? Go for it. I'm waiting. Let's see here. <coughs> Two times. Ow! You made a way for it. 6.371. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the wrong number. Um, 6. 6.674 times 10 to the minus 11. That's the big G. The mass of the sun, I'm remembering two times, uh, two times 10 to the 30th kilograms. Anyone, anyone want to check me on that? <laughs> Do none of you have a phone? Oh, uh, yeah, you're right. What you want? Mass of the sun? <laughs> yeah, that's right. It might be like 1.99. Close enough. And what's what what is an astro astronomical unit? In, <clears throat> what is an astronomical unit in meters? I know it's like 93 million miles, but like astronomical unit in meters. One point. Benjamin, quiet. What? Oh, ooh. You okay? Yeah. All right. Maybe don't do that. 1.5 times 10 to the 11th meters. All right, so you guys crunch the numbers. What's this work out to? <clears throat> what we got? What's that? No, oh, let me get, I, I need to calc. I'm not putting my hands up. <laughs> I'm going to get you. I'm going to go back to my office and get the other gun. I'm going to shoot you. Then you'll be, then you'll be sorry. Yeah. That's right. Forty-two thousand meters per second. Let's see here. Two times six point six seven times two times ten to the thirty minus eleven is nineteen. Uh, Divided by 1.5, divided by 10 to the 11, square root of all that, oops, square root answer, yeah, 42,174, 42.17 eh, kilometers per second. So if we, um, you know, it's about... It's about four times, so about 100,000 miles per hour, roughly, if you want to escape the solar system. Have we, have we, have we achieved that speed with any uh, satellite? Yes. We have. Yeah, there are some, a couple of early, early, um, early satellites have, um, <coughs> have escaped, have escaped the solar system. Was it like, I'm trying to remember, what was it? Um, Voyager. Yeah, Voyager, that's the one. So a better satellite than a TV show for sure. Um, <clears throat> I didn't have to do that. You, it's a self-evident truth. You don't have to. Say <laughs> it, it doesn't. Don't know it. it doesn't have to be said. It's just known. Sir, <laughs> just turn around so it doesn't shoot in the eye. It's like story, but I'm not going to shoot him in the neck again. Uh huh. Uh huh. All right, so listen, um, if we were to, like a, a less extreme version of this, what if you don't escape, right? So, <clears throat> um, <coughs> so <coughs> sorry, if you look at, ah, so 
How much energy is this for one kilogram, by the way? What is one half mv escape squared for m equals to one kilogram? In other words, that would be like <coughs> g um, times the mass of the Earth divided by the radius of the Earth, right? <coughs> times one kilogram. If you work that out, the number there, I crunched it before class here, is 62.54 megajoules. That's for this, this is for Earth. Like not escaping Earth or escaping? This is for one kilogram. This is the amount of energy that's necessary for one kilogram to just barely escape Earth's gravity. Just one kilogram? Just one kilogram. All that energy? Yep. We can do like the... That's... The but that's just like a half gallon of gas. Yeah. 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 Oh, why is it so hard? Oh, why? Because it's, it's not easy to build a rocket that uses gas with 100% efficiency, right? No. Yeah. Uh, give me, give me <laughs> Do we have a major in this? I don't know. I've, I've lost track of the engineering majors here, but <clears throat> is there like a gas-powered rocket engineering? I don't think so. <laughs> All right, so... Ay, ay, ay. No, what's this, what's this? Go mile. Go mile? Oh, okay, well. <sighs> you guys got your wish, you came back. Physics is suffering for it, I hope you're happy. <clears throat> yes, Benjamin. <laughs> Would you like to scan the white pillows? It's... All right, so... <clears throat> Goodness gracious. So suppose you're here, Mr. Top Hat. He's got a, he's got a mass, right? Any... <clears throat> he launches it upwards with an initial velocity of, let us say, 8 kilometers per second, right? Um, <clears throat> example 3, I suppose. I'm not sure what example it is. I'm going to call it example 3. How far, how, how high does it go? Would it be appropriate, would it be appropriate to use MGH here? I would say pretty clearly not, right? <clears throat> because we're we're getting we're going to be well above the surface of the Earth, I'm pretty sure we should to be reasonable here use the correct potential energy for gravity. So here we go, energy is conserved. So energy is equal to um, <clears throat> minus g mass of the Earth times the mass divided by the radius of the Earth, right? <coughs> Plus one half m v naught squared, right? And how high does it get? At the top of the flight, what, what happens? Before it comes back down, what happens up here? Vf equals to what? Zero. So at the top of the flight, we have minus gm, mass of the Earth, divided by the radius of the Earth, plus h, yeah? That's the H max, and there is no kinetic energy, so that, that's, that's what we're up again. We have to solve that <coughs> equation to figure out the max height. Now, the mass doesn't matter. See that? The mass is canceling. And so, <coughs> goodness gracious. So we get, what, what happened? What? Chinese? Oh, okay. Very nice. So one, one over <laughs> minus G. 
All right, I'm just going to write. I'm not going to talk. Uh. <laughs> Do we agree? Yes, no, maybe so. What do you think? Can you solve that for h? So I, what I did was I, I, I flipped both sides. So I reciprocated the equation. There's something we haven't done yet this semester, right? And then I'm going to multiply by minus gme. So I've got, you know, minus gme <laughs> divided by minus gme divided by re plus v naught squared over 2 is equal to Re plus H. By the way, these problems are really fussy. Like, if you are careless with ground off here, it will just kill you. Um, so, obviously, H is equal to what? H is equal to? Um, apparently, <coughs> G um, times the mass of the Earth times the radius of the Earth. Well, I mean, we can leave it like it is or try to simplify it. I guess I'll just leave it like it is. <coughs> I'm going to put a minus through it, though. GME divided by the radius of the Earth um, minus V naught squared over 2 um, minus the radius of the Earth. Yeah? So that should be my H. So let's work it out. What does that work out to? Oh, I happened to work out that GME over the radius of the Earth is actually 6.254 times 10 to the 7th. So you've got 6 point, don't do that. 6.674 times 10 to the 11th. 6.74 times 10 to the minus 11th, right? Times the mass of the Earth, which was um, 5.97 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. Uh, I'm going to omit the units here. <laughs> Divided by, it, 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 the GME over RE, that works out to 6.254 times 10 to the 7th. And then V naught squared was, so we've got 8,000 squared. You okay? Maybe stop doing what you're doing? see here. <clears throat> Minus the radius of the earth, which was what? Um, 6.37 times 10 to the sixth. Of course, all of this is in meters. What's that work out to? <clears throat> oh, goodness gracious. to the 24 minus 11. <laughs> Alright, I get 6, let's see, let me count, is it 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 6 point, 6 point 6, 8, times 10 to the 6, uh, Benjamin, just a second here, buddy. 10 to the 6th meters. <clears throat> What'd you guys get? Anybody get that? 
About seven thousand. Who did? Matt. We have 62.54 mega 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 meters. Six. I got 6.67 times 10 to the six meters, or if you like, uh, 6,700 kilometers, something like that. Oh, that's about the radius of the Earth. Huh. But so the, the altitude is actually about the rate. So it's about the radius of the Earth beyond the Earth's surface. So little r. <clears throat> So little r is approximately two times the radius of the Earth, I think, if I remember my radius of the Earth correctly. Well, not quite, but... So I, I, listen guys, I cannot use MGH here. It would be inappropriate, right? Because <coughs> MGH is only a legitimate formula mm, up to maybe about like 100 kilometers, something like that. Past that, it starts to be like more and more off, all right? So, why, 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 Benjamin? Because why? All right, you're going to take a time out now. I want you to go sit in the back of the room. No. Yes. No. I'll tell mom. Oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> that is the ultimate veto. There is nothing getting past it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't do it. Oh. <laughs> Benjamin, why don't you go color on the sideboard for a little bit, okay? Thank you. <coughs> mm. Excuse me. All right, so um, let's go on here. Question. How much energy does it take um, to bring two masses? Like, how, what's the potential energy of two masses that are separated <coughs> a bit from each other? Like if I have M1 and I have M2, let me, let me ask a separate question. Suppose, if you can imagine this, that the universe is formless and void, and nothing else in it, right? Just nothing, nothing, just space. And <clears throat> suppose you bring a mass and you just stick it somewhere, like here, M1. How much energy does that, that take? equals mc squared. That's, that's a decent answer, but we're ignoring that because we don't know relativity. So the answer from a gravitational perspective is nothing. There's nothing for it to gravitate. It's just sitting there. But once you bring another mass in, m2, now all of a sudden there's a gravitational potential energy of this system. What's the gravitational potential energy? So for these two, if the distance between these is let's say r12, then the potential energy is equal to <coughs> g m1 m2 divided by r12. Um, sorry guys, I'm having a moment of maybe there should be a minus there. What would, what happened if I if I well let's think about it. If I if I let these go, if you if you if they weren't just sort of glued in place here, what would happen? They go towards each other, right? No. So, <clears throat> if that's the natural motion, would that be lowering or raising potential energy? If, it'd be lowering, right? So, <coughs> um, it must be there's a minus, there has to be a minus here. There, there has to be a minus here. So that, that would be the potential energy of this system, just that, all right? Um, <clears throat> oftentimes, we just think of this, I mean, this is all we've been doing today so far, really. Just think of like, you know, M2, for example, being the Earth, right? And M1 being the other hypothetical mass we've been throwing up into the, into the sky, right? That's exactly the formula we used. So, um, <clears throat> but fun, fun fact, if you, were, oh, if you were to add, say, M3, 
How much potential energy would that have? This system now. So <clears throat> you see, and then you'd have this and this to contend with, right? So like R1, uh, R2, 3, and <coughs> excuse me, R1, 3. <coughs> and so the potential energy in this system would be like, you know, minus G M1, M3 over R1, 3, minus G M2, M3 over R2, 3. So there's, the, p the potential energy is relational. It, it, when there's masses that are attracting each other, you get potential energy from each pair. <clears throat> All right. I don't think I even have a homework problem like this for you guys. It won't really matter this semester. This becomes an important problem in the context of electrostatics next semester. So it's, I'm just helping you out for next semester at the moment. <clears throat> You're welcome. And <coughs> But I do have problems like the following in the homework, so let me help you out with these. <coughs> what would the potential energy <coughs> be, not from just two masses, but suppose you have a, a fixed mass M Dad? and a, Dad? yes, Benjamin? He won't get back to board. <laughs> All right. <coughs> so, guys, question. Uh, suppose. <coughs> ah, yeah, yeah. That was example three. This was example four. Example five. Example five here. <coughs> so, suppose you've got. A, a, a uniform mass, all right, of length L. All right, and then you have total mass big M. All right, then over here you have another mass M, right, and the distance from here to here is X. What's the potential and Whoa. <laughs> Interesting. What's the potential energy of this system as a function of x? The question is, how much, how much potential energy do you have? Benjamin, stop. <clears throat> then she won't give it back to you. I'm sorry. That's just the way the cookie crumbles, man. Go sit in the back. Do you want a mustache? <laughs> you want it? You want it? You want a beard? More? Oh. Oh. Child, you run. It's wrong. All right. <clears throat> so, to figure out how much potential energy this uniform rod has, we can think about it in terms of the last example. So imagine this. To start with, Benjamin, don't do that. You're going to run into that and you're going to hurt yourself, man. So <clears throat> what? You can hide there. They won't know it. Stay there for a minute. Maybe you should say, did you say please? Mm -hmm. You already asked please? And she wouldn't listen to you even with please? Mm -hmm. Oh man. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Maybe if you promise not to shoot her, that might help. I don't know. So if you can imagine <clears throat> this whole mass here, right? First of all, just imagine putting M here by its lonesome. That takes no energy, right? But then the potential energy for this whole system you can think of 
by the principle of superposition. It's the potential energy it takes to bring each little bit of mass, each little bit of mass here, right? A little bit of mass into the system. So like <clears throat> the little bit of potential energy it takes, if you like, um, I'll use U for potential energy, DU would be equal to minus G, um, the mass, times the little bit of big M, and then the distance. Now I, I, need, I need to describe that distance, right? So let's, let's introduce another variable here. Let me call it little L, okay? Little L. So the distance between dm and m is little l plus x. Do you guys agree? So that's the potential energy it takes to bring in that little bit of mass, hypothetically from infinity. That's how much potential energy the little, like, big dm <coughs> and m have. And to find the total potential energy of the system, we just need to integrate that potential energy over the rod to find the total potential energy. <coughs> Once we've done that, we'll also be able to figure out the force of gravity of this rod on that mass, which we don't have a formula for yet because it's more complicated than what we've been talking about because it's not a single point mass. Like the mass which is here is pulling on this more strongly than the mass over here, right? And it's a continuous like lessening of the gravitational force of attraction as you get further and further away from that mass over there as you go along the rod, right? So, what is dm? Well, if we assume this is a uniform mass, dm, you see, is just m over l times dl, right? So the, 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 <clears throat> mass per unit total, the mass per unit length is m over l. Since I'm looking at a little dl right there, so this thickness right here, dl. So dl times m over l gives me the mass there. And so <clears throat> du is minus g, the little m, which is fixed. dm is actually m over l. And then we've got dl over l plus x. And this is going to be true for what? For 0 less than or equal to l less than or equal to what? We have a mass all the way from where? From, from l equal to 0 all the way over to over here, which is where little l is equal to big L. And then to find the total potential energy, we do what we do every time. We want to add up things, infinitely many of them. We use the continuous sum, the integral. So the potential energy here is equal to the integral from 0 to L of minus gm m over L dL over L plus x. Notice x is a constant. It's fixed here. And so is all of this. So we can pull that outside the integral. And we just have minus g m big M divided by L integration from 0 to L of d L over L plus x. How do you do that integral? If you're in Calc 2 and you can't do this integral, you're in trouble. <laughs> Put a u on the bottom. Oh, come on, really? Yeah, you just write it down, right? I mean, come on, come on, guys. So minus g m big M, but yeah, you'd make a u substitution. But that would be a bad choice here because I've got this u over here. Eh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Natural. <laughs> but yeah, it is a substitution. But the substitution is kind of boring because if we make l plus x the substitution variable, then the, the, the differential is the same. Now. <clears throat> What we get then is minus g m m over l natural log of um, l plus x minus the natural log of x. Notice that l is the variable here. So if you want me to make that more clear, I'll add some equals little l here to help you out. <coughs> L is, X is fixed but arbitrary. Then what? What can we do? Well, we can. <coughs> you say go home. 
no, 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 we're not gonna go home. Make sure, I'm gonna make sure I haven't made a sign mistake here. All right, so then we can use properties of the log. What's the log of a difference? We have the natural log of L plus X over X. X is positive, L is positive. There's no danger for like the absolute value being troublesome. And then do algebra here. So we've got minus GMM over L natural log of one plus L over X. There you go. There's a nice snazzy formula for the potential energy the potential energy of the system. <clears throat> Indeed, that is the answer which is given in Mastering Physics. Now do I have your interest? <laughs> okay, so yeah, this is literally the answer to part A of exercise 13.38. But I thought it would be good for me to work this out with you because I'd like you to understand it before I put it on the next test, if I was to, if that was to happen. Now, <clears throat> so what do you think should happen to this? What, what if this picture instead looks like this? Here's the rod, and then here's the mass, right? What should, what should the formula be like if this is the situation, right? What, what should this be if, if x is much, much greater than L? It should be just be like a point mass, right? So this formula should it, it should, it should really reduce to like minus g m m over what? Over x, right? Because that's what, that's what the, the formula would be for the potential energy if we were just talking about these as point masses, right? So it must be that <clears throat> if you work out this right here from a power series perspective, and would that be reasonable? If x is much, much greater than l, that means that L over X is what? It's much, much less than what? One, right? So L over X is a very small quantity. And so if we have natural log of one plus a very small quantity, you know, you can look up, there's a series approximation for that, right? <clears throat> so I'll let you guys look at that. I'm not gonna do the rest of the problem for you, but you could do that. Now to find the force, <clears throat> to find the force of gravity on M, Due to, due to this rod, right? So it would be attractive, right? And so like the force of gravity, how would you, what would it, how would you calculate it? It would be minus du dx. So we don't need to, so like problems like this, it, I have to be careful. I can only just use regular differentiation to get the potential energy and force related if we have special symmetry so we don't have to actually do the full gradient. But this is the situation here because the force of gravity is along this line and x is the coordinate along there. So the gradient just becomes the derivative with respect to x in this sense. So if I wanted to find the force of gravity, <coughs> excuse me, all I'd have to do is differentiate this with respect to x and that would be it, all right? I won't do that because we're out of time, but does that make sense? Another question. This one won't take long at all. What if you wanted <clears throat> the potential energy instead of a rod? Suppose you had a hoop like this, hoop of mass m, and its distance from some mass m is, let's say, <coughs> x to the center and the radius is a. What would be the potential energy in this system? What happens here if you think about a little dm? How far is it from m? Oh yeah, so the r, r is equal to the square root of x squared plus a squared? Do we need to integrate this time? See, we don't because the whole ring is all the same stupid distance. So we can just write the formula down. It's literally GMM over the square root of x squared plus a squared. 
there you go. That's the potential energy for this ring for that fixed mass right there along the axis of the center of the ring, a distance x from its center. And if you wanted to find the force of gravity of this ring on this mass, simply differentiate this with respect to x and it will tell you it. <coughs> What's that? What if like the ring and the mass are aligned at the center? What if it's up? Oh, uh -huh. if, this, if, this, if, this, if the ring and the mass are not aligned, uh -huh. then the answer will involve an infinite series of Bessel functions. So, so if you take our second course in differential equations where you learn to properly solve things in terms of special functions, then you'll know how to do that. I'm joking, of course, because we don't have that course. <laughs>